Welcome back to Becca Ballistics. Today I'd like to talk about corrosive ammunition. I'm sure you've heard of it and most of you have probably used it, but why certain ammo corrosive and how fast does it ruin your guns? Keep watching and you'll soon know the answer. When we talk about corrosive ammunition, we are actually talking about the primers used in that ammunition. In fact, smokeless powder does not leave any corrosion inducing residues, the production of which is completely due to the priming mixture. The troublemaker is an oxidizer called potassium chlorate, which has been used in primers for a very long time. When the priming mixture ignites, it is converted to potassium chloride, which is a water soluble salt that is sprayed in tiny particles in the propellant gases and is thus deposited on all the gun parts that come in contact with the gases. This is bad news for steel, since it is a substance capable of absorbing moisture from the air, leaving the metal covered in droplets of highly corrosive salt solution. Also, the salt is not being consumed during corrosion, which means that even tiny amounts can do significant damage. To show all of this, I prepared a simple experiment. I took four mild steel samples, marked them and exposed three of them to different mixtures, while the fourth will be left as it is and will be our reference. For the first sample, I prepared a mixture of smokeless powder and modern priming mixture of the non-corrosive type. I extracted it from some primers after temporarily desensitizing them with acetone and then simply mixed it with the powder. For the second sample, I again used smokeless powder, but this time mixed with the old corrosive priming mixture. Now you may argue that I am instead using match heads, but that's basically the same. The overall composition of safety match heads is very close to that of old primers, with the only difference of the latter containing a sensitizing fuel. Both use potassium chlorate as the oxidizer, which is what we are interested the most, and antimony sulfide as the main fuel. Anyway, the third sample is simply exposed to black powder. Since it has a very bad reputation regarding corrosion, I thought it would be interesting to compare its effects to those of corrosive primers. I then placed the samples over the mixtures and set them off. After all of them have been exposed to the combustion products, I glued them to a board to avoid cross-contamination and left them in a 60% relative humidity environment. After only two days, the first visible signs of corrosion started appearing on sample 2, and by day 5 they were definitely evident. On the other hand, no corrosion was visible on any other sample, including the black powder one. After 7 days, sample number 2 is heavily rusted and still no corrosion at all on the other samples. While this doesn't surprise us for sample 1, I would have expected some corrosion to occur on the black powder scorched sample 3. I think the reason why sample 3 is not corroded is that black powder residues are slightly alkaline and iron forms a passivation layer in alkaline environments that prevents further corrosion. In those cases, it often happens that a lower concentration of the salt is more effective in promoting corrosion, so I decided to dilute the residues on sample 3. Again, at day 10, after other 3 days, no trace of corrosion was visible. At this point I did two things. I scraped the surface of the sample with a wire brush and did another test on the fourth sample, which was our reference, by putting a small amount of black powder directly on top of it and igniting it. At day 11, after another day, I could already see some tiny bits of corrosion in the areas that were farther away from the burning, which further validates the thesis that light fouling is more corrosive than heavy fouling. At day 15, some initial signs of corrosion started finally appearing on sample 3. In the meanwhile, sample 2 is completely trashed, while sample 1 is exactly as it was at the beginning of the test. Finally, on the new black powder sample, corrosion is pretty much the same that could be seen on day 11. We can therefore conclude that. First, modern primers combined with any smokeless powder will not leave any corrosion inducing residue at all. On the other hand, corrosive primers have indeed a very strong corrosion inducing behavior and the first rust spots are generally visible before 48 hours have passed. Finally, black powder is much less aggressive than corrosive primers, meaning that it takes much longer for the same amount of corrosion to appear and that it only appears when the residues are not too concentrated. Anyway, this is all I wanted to tell you today. I hope you found this information useful. 
Let me know if you like this video and use the comment section to share your personal experience on the subject, I'd love to hear that. Subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one and I'll see you soon, bye.